so we'll uh, start with uh, the next couple of lectures so what we're going to do is we're going to analyze selection sort that we had studied last time so here is a quick animation of selection sort just to recap what exactly happens so this is an array of six integers and uh, we want to sort it in decreasing order so what we're going to do is uh, we will first find out the maximum element that is 27 and we will swap it with the element at the top of the array. Then in the remainder of the array we will find out the maximum element which happens to be 25 and then we will sort it with uh, we will swap it with the next position in the array. Uh, then 24 swap with the next position in the array then there is another 24 which gets swapped with the next position and finally there is 18 and 17 which are already in the right positions okay so that is selection sort and finally at the end of it you have the entire array sorted in decreasing order right and just to recap this is how the uh, selection sort function in c++ looks like so there is this loop in which current top is gradually changed from 0 1 2 all the way up to n minus 1 and the part of the array between current top and n minus 1 is considered the unsorted array. So in every iteration of the loop you find the index of the maximum element in that unsorted part of the array and then swap it with current top. And uh, what, what does find index of max do? It really iterates from the start index up to the end index and if it finds an element which is greater than or equal to the current max index it just registers that okay and swap is of course very standard. So everybody is up to speed with this right. So now what we want to do is we want to count the number of basic steps involved in selection sort. So what is a basic step how do we, de how do we define what a basic step is. So you can roughly think of that the time the total number of steps and hence the total time taken for sorting an array should have some dependence on the number of elements in the array. The time it takes to sort an array of size 2 should certainly not be the same as the time it takes to sort an element, element an array of size 2 million. So there has to be some dependence on the size of the array and that is what we are trying to analyze over here that how much time or how many steps does selection sort take to sort an array of size n but of course you know in the in the selection sort function as we saw there are several things happening we are reading elements of arrays comparing them updating some other stuff and all of that. So what we are going to do is we are going to group together operations which the, the time taken for which is independent of the size of the array and it is some kind of constant. So for example to read two elements of an array A to compare them and to update the other variable current max index this might take 20 nanosecond on some computer or 50 nanosecond on some other computer or maybe 1 millisecond on the third computer but this is independent of the size of the array no matter whether the size of the array is 1 million or 1 billion the time taken to do these operations is going to be fixed for that computer. It may vary from computer to computer, it may be different from what it is going to be today from what it is going to be you know 5 years down the line, it may become even faster but nevertheless this is some time that is taken for performing some computational steps and the time taken for this is some constant that depends on the technology that we are using for our computer today and it is independent of the size of the array. Is that clear? That is what we call a basic step. It is a step for which we know that there is a certain unit of time that is required maybe 20 nanosecond, maybe 50 nanosecond whatever but it is independent of the size of the array and this unit can keep changing as computers become faster uh, as we have more advanced technology but nevertheless this is one unit that is independent of the size of the array fine. Similarly to swap two specified elements of an array this time does not depend on how large the array is it just depends on how fast your computer is running right so this is so so these are things that we are going to consider as basic steps and you know I mean maybe incrementing i whatever checking whether i is less than n all of those things you can bunch in inside these they are also as long as I say that I am I am considering the time taken for one comparison of i to n or for one increment of i it is independent of the size of the array it is independent of the size of the problem is that clear. So that is what we mean by a basic step it is a certain abstract no notion but a basic step means to do a computation it takes to do that computation involved in a basic step it takes some fixed amount of time 
and that is independent of the size of the problem, the input problem. Okay. So we are going to count how many such basic steps that needed in selection sort, and in particular, we want to count what is this number of basic steps as a function of n. Okay. So let's see how this might work. So here is our array of size six. So n is six. Initially, current top is there at zero. And then we want to find the index of the maximum element in the part of the array between a0 and a5, right? So that is the call, find, max, find index of max, array a, starting position 0, total 6 elements. And what is going to happen when we execute this function, find index of max? We will start off with current max index, start i, everything over here at 0. And then we take one step where we increment i and check whether 18 is greater than 24. 18 is not greater than 24, so current max index stays there. We take the second step, is 17 greater than 24? No, so current max index stays wherever it was. 25 was indeed greater than 24, so current max index gets incremented. And then 27 is greater than 25, so current max in index increments again. And finally, uh, 24 is not uh, greater than 27, so current max index stays there and i increments there. So how many steps did we take? So starting from here, this was one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps. And in each step, what did we do? We read some element of an array, compare it with some other element, incremented something, updated something, basically a fixed amount of time in each of these steps. And there are five such steps that we had to take, right? So we used up five basic steps. And in general, you can see that if this array is of size n, then we, I mean, here the array was of size six, so we took five basic steps. So if the array is of size n, we'll start from the zeroth element and we'll have n minus one subsequent steps, right? So in general, n minus one. And after that, what do we do? We have to swap this fourth element, which we found out to be the maximum with current top, right? And that swap also involves reading an element of the array, copying it somewhere, writing some element of the array. So it's some fixed number of computational steps takes a fixed amount of time. So we'll count that as one basic step. So totally we have used n minus one plus one basic step so far, right? This is one iteration of uh, the selection sort loop when current top was zero. What is going to happen after that? So basically we've just finished one iteration of this loop. What is going to happen after that? Current top will become one and we'll iterate again. So when current top becomes one, we are here. And what does the next iteration do? It basically calls find index of max in the array starting from position one. And what's going to happen there? We'll start current max index and i and everything over here. And then we are going to increment i and 17 is not greater than 18. So current max index stays there. We'll increment i since 25 was greater than 18. Current max index gets incremented. Doesn't get incremented and doesn't get incremented because 25 was less than 24 in both cases. So current max index stays there. Once again, how many steps did we take starting from here? So this was one, two, three, four. So we now have four basic steps. And if you generalize it to uh, n elements, if there were n elements in the array and we are already done with the first element, so current top is at one now. So it's easy to see that we are now left with n minus two steps, right? Okay, so n minus two steps. Uh, and then of course we have to swap. So that swap itself is going to be considered as one basic step. And so what are we left with? N minus two plus one basic steps, okay? Now after that, when current top reaches uh, the second index, right? So here it was N minus one plus one, here it was N minus two plus one. So now it's, so N minus three plus one basic steps at the next position. And finally, when I reach the n minus 1th entry, there would have been n minus n minus 1 plus 1 basic steps. Right? So this is fairly straightforward to see. So what is the total number of basic steps that we used? So you add up all of those expressions, n minus 1 plus 1 plus n minus 2 plus 1 and so on. And if you do some simple algebra, it turns out to be n minus 1 times n plus 2 by 2. The important point is that this expression has a quadratic dependence on n. There is an n squared in it, right? 
so this increases quadratically with n and what do we mean by that so here i have just tried to plot how n minus 1 times n plus 2 by 2 looks like for values of n from 10 to 100 and you can clearly see the outline of a parabola over here right because this is a quadratic function right so is that good enough i mean is the number of steps that we are seeing that to sort an array of size 100 we will need some 5049 steps and then it is going to increase quadratically is that good enough it turns out that it is actually pretty bad and so this can indeed be i mean if if each step takes whatever 50 nanoseconds and if the number of steps is going to grow quadratically then the total amount of time that you need is also going to grow quadratically right and that is not good news because it basically means that we cannot use selection sort for sorting very large arrays and here is a simple illustration so suppose I have 1 million data items each with a score and by the way 1 million data items is actually a very small number in today's world if you do google search with you know any reasonable thing uh, let us say you know independence day of India or something you will come up with around 10 million pages okay so 1 million is really a small number in today's world and if I have 1 million data items each with a score and if I want to sort these data items with respect to that score how many basic steps are required so if n is a million then n minus 1 times n plus 2 over 2 is roughly 5 times 10 raised to 11 and if each basic step takes 20 nanoseconds so this is really almost at the edge of today's technology if you want to do two array reads from memory compare them and write back one something else back to memory I think this is the fastest computers available today will probably be able to do it in around 20 nanoseconds okay so the computers that you are running we are running in the lab which will take much more time than this but even if I take that that if, if each basic step takes 20 nanoseconds and then if you multiply it by this number you find that you need approximately 2.78 hours to sort an array of size 1 million which is not large by today's standards okay. so clearly this is not going to be very useful for sorting large arrays right if I take hours to sort I mean it's it's like you know 2.78 hours is a movie almost so you hit the enter button on your computer go see a movie and come back and then it says it's still crunching it's not yet sorted it right so so that's not good enough can we do better fortunately we can do much better and in fact what we will study in the next few lectures is that it can be done in rough, roughly n times log n base 2 basic steps as opposed to n squared some function of some function like n squared for in, in selection sort you can actually do it in n times log n base 2 basic steps and now if you figure out how much time it would take to sort that same array of size 10 raised to 6 you will find that in a few seconds it can be done so therefore what is important is that sorting is a real world problem we will have to solve this problem we found out one method to do it which was selection sort and it was working fine it was indeed sorting and it was doing something nicely we could program a computer to do it but it turns out that it is not good enough it's not fast enough its performance is not up to our expectations and so we'll have to now learn about other ways to solve the same problem to sort an array of numbers but i mean these other ways should do something cleverer should do something smarter such that the number of basic steps required can come down significantly so that we can then actually use it for doing real world for sorting real world data okay so is that fine is there any doubt about this so in the next part uh, what we're going to do is we're going to study uh, another way of sorting this the same array of integers and we'll see that this sort this way of sorting which is also called merge sort works very very differently from selection sort i mean there are some similarities but by and large it's very different and uh, in the next class we'll actually do an analysis of merge sort and we'll see that it actually achieves that n times log n base 2 probably with some constant multipliers some 2 times n times log n base 2 or something but roughly that okay so so this is essentially saying now you have learned programming now you have learned how to solve a particular problem but we are not happy with that solution it's not that we cannot program our computer to solve that prob problem we can program our computer to do selection sort 
but we are not happy with that solution. It's not solving real world problems. So let's do something smarter. And then of course we want to program it on this also onto a computer. Okay. So what was the intuition behind selection sort? Given a particular problem, let's say to sort an array of size six, we solved part of the problem. Basically we solved the problem for just a one element thing. We said, okay, let me find out what should be the topmost element here. And then we were left with the remaining five elements and we said that that's a similar but simpler problem to solve. Okay. Similar because it's still sorting, simpler because now I have n minus one elements, five elements to solve. So if you see the basic principle underlying this, what we are saying is we want to go from a bigger problem to a smaller problem and by solving the smaller problem and combining it with something else that I have already done, I want to get a solution of the bigger problem. Right? So this is a general paradigm in computing where, you know, the, I mean, this, this is kind of this repeats in, in several, uh, I mean, those of you who are going to study computational techniques further, you'll see that this theme repeats several times. It's, it's one of the very well-known techniques for solving difficult problems. So what you do is you take a large problem, a complex problem and you break it up into small parts. Okay? But of course you've got to break it up into small parts in the right way such that if I give you the solutions of these small parts, you can combine those solutions back to get a solution of the bigger problem. So it's too difficult to solve a big problem, let's break it up into small parts. If that is too difficult, let's break those up into smaller parts. If that is also too difficult, let's break them up even into smaller parts until we find that the problem is small enough, simple enough that we can solve it. And let's solve those simple problems and let's combine the solutions of those simple problems together to get the solution of the original problem. Right? So that's the overall idea. This is also called divide and conquer. I and mean, I'm sure all of you know that the British basically used this to rule India for a very long time. So we are going to use this to conquer difficult problems. So how do we sort using divide and conquer, right? So always keep at the back of your mind big problem, we don't know what to do, let's break it up. Create some smaller problems out of it. So we'll just break it up and create two smaller problems out of it. And how did we break it up? By just putting a line over here, by just breaking off that array over here. So 24, 18, 17 goes to the top subarray, 25, 17, 27, 24 goes to the bottom subarray and we have basically broken it up into two parts. Now these two parts are themselves similar but simpler problems. Right? I still have to sort those two parts. So they're similar, but they're simpler because they just have half the elements compared to the previous problem. And how are we going to sort them? So let's not worry about how we're going to sort them individually now. Let's say by some means, maybe by selection sort or by manually inspecting it, I have been able to sort the top subarray. Turns out that this was already sorted, so not much needed to be done. And let's say I have also been able to sort this bottom subarray over here by some means. After I have sorted these, this is a sorted array of size 3, that's a sorted array of size 3, but I really wanted to get a sorted array of size 6. So how do I take these two sorted smaller arrays and somehow get this larger sorted array out of it? So clearly if I put this array after this, it's not going to work because 17 will appear before 27. In this particular case, if you put this array on top of that array, it will work, but in general it need not work because this array will have some of the elements, this array will have some other elements. They are individually sorted, but when you put them together, they may need to get interleaved, right? I mean, this is one sorted array, this is one sorted array, but only when you interleave them, maybe you'll get the overall sorted array. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these two sorted subarrays and we're going to merge them. Okay, we'll see how to do this merge, but we're going to merge them to create the overall sorted array. And that's what is going to be our basic idea. That we'll divide the problem, then we'll somehow sort the smaller subproblems, and then we'll merge the solutions of the smaller subproblems to get the solution of the larger problem. Is that clear? Three basic steps, or three uh, you know key steps over here. So the first step is to divide an array of size n into two arrays of size n by two. How difficult is that? This is actually extremely easy. Just calculate the index of that middle element and 0 to that middle index is the first subarray, that middle index to the end index is the last subarray. And of course, if the array is not exactly, if n is not even, then you'll have one more element in one half than the other half. So let's, let's not worry about that. 
and then we have to sort each of these subarrays of size n by 2 how we, how are we going to do that should we apply selection sort or should we do something else let's postpone that for the time being what we're going to now focus on is to see how we can merge these two sorted subarrays each of size n by 2 into one bigger sorted array of size n okay so that's our objective we want to see how we can merge two sorted subarrays so the important point is the two subarrays that we are trying to merge are already sorted so we should make use of that we should exploit that and we should then try to merge them into one larger sorted array so uh, so here is sorted subarray 1 here is sorted subarray 2 and uh, okay so how are we going to merge these two sorted subarrays uh, so remember that this is sorted already in decreasing order and the other guy is also sorted in decreasing order which means that this is the maximum element of this subarray and this is the maximum element of this subarray right so if this is the maximum element of one subarray and that is the maximum element of the other subarray then the maximum of those two elements should be the maximum element of the entire array right so that's what we're going to do we are going to compare these two elements and figure out which is maximum and that should be the maximum element of the entire array so since 27 is greater than 24 so 27 moves to the maximum position for the maximum element and of course now that we have taken care of this element we can reduce our whatever index or arrow to the next element so now we are looking at this subarray 25 24 which is already sorted in decreasing order and we are looking at this subarray which is also sorted in decreasing order so once again if this is the maximum element of this sorted array and this is the maximum element of this this part of the sorted array then if I just take the maximum of these two I should find the next element up here right so that's what we're going to do 25 is greater than 24 so 25 comes there and then that index increments there and then finally we check whether 24 both of them are 24 so it's not that one of them is greater than the other so let us take the top one with the top array has been waiting for a long time so let's take one from there and so the index there comes down right and after that it's the same thing we have to check which which is greater than what 24 is greater than 18 so we pick up 24 put it there and now we are done with the second subarray we have put all the elements of the second subarray in the rightful place and note that there is a 27 25 and 24 there is one element of the first subarray has gotten inserted in between right and now of course since we have only one subarray remaining and their elements are already elements are already sorted in increasing order we can just put those elements here and that gives us the overall merged sorted array okay is that clear so so i hope you noticed how this arrow came only down for each of the subarrays it did not ever move up it only came down it only kept moving down i was either moving down once the arrow for one subarray or the arrow for the other subarray at no point of time did i have to go back and retrace what i did earlier right so therefore that's how we're going to merge two sorted subarrays of size n by 2 we're going to make one pass over each one of them and put the elements in the right order well so we had postponed this problem how do we sort each subarray of size n by 2 so now uh, should we use selection sort or should we use some other thing so here we can step back and just think about what we were originally trying to do we were originally trying to uh, sort an array of size n and now i'm required to sort an array of size n by 2 okay, so it's really a very similar problem and so can't we use the same steps that we used to solve the original problem which basically means take this array of size n by 2 break it into two parts somehow sort those two parts and merge them what is that somehow sort those two parts take that and again break it into two parts and keep doing this right so this basically suggests question i'm going to use the same technique to solve a simpler version of the problem and what is the termination case, case of that recursion so of course when the array is of size one then everything is sorted so i don't need to break it up further fine so here is how it's going to work divide and conquer in action for sorting our array so we'll first break it up 
into two similar but simpler problems by just cutting this array, array at the midpoint. Okay. Now, how do I sort this array? This is too difficult a problem for me, so I'll break it up further. And because it had three elements, so when I break it up, one of them will have one more element than the other. And now, I've got to sort these subarrays. How do I sort that subarray? Since that has just one element, that's easy. I know it's already sorted. How do I sort the other subarray? It's too difficult. It has two elements. I know how to sort, sort arrays of only size one. So I'll break it up further into two arrays of size one. And then I know how to sort arrays of size one. They're already sorted, nothing to be done. And then I'm going to merge them back, right? So when you merge those two back, you get this. So now you have this sorted subarray. This was sorted because it was trivially sorted. It was of size one and this sorted subarray. And now we've got to merge them back into a sorted subarray over here. And then we've also got to solve the problem for this. But once again, this is too difficult. Let's break it up into smaller parts. And then one of these smaller parts, I know how to solve. So that's done. The other smaller part is again difficult. So break it up into even further smaller parts. And then I know how to solve each of those cases. And then I just merge them back to get this. And then I merge those back to get this. And finally, I merge these two back to get this. Okay, And that is the sorted array. And this entire process of going from the unsorted array on the left to the sorted array on the right by repeatedly breaking it up into two parts until we reach the case where we were left with an array of size just one. And then we said that we know how to sort that array. And then we just merged everything back. So this process is called merge sort. And it's kind of obvious why it is called merge sort. The key step here is actually merging. The other step is just breaking it up, breaking it up, breaking it up until we reach arrays of size one. Right? So the key uh, step here is really merging. So this is called merge sort. So are there any doubts on this part of the lecture? No? OK, good. They are dividing into three parts. There are no three parts, right? Every problem is. Yeah, so you merge them and you get this is now one sorted array, one sorted subarray. This is the other sorted subarray. So once again, you have two sorted subarrays and you want to merge them. Yeah, so once we merge them, we get one sorted bigger array. But now this bigger array happens to be a subarray of the original thing. So now this, this is one sorted subarray, that is another sorted subarray and then we merge it back. Right. So at every step, I'm saying that this is a more difficult problem. Let me break it up into smaller problems. Once you solve the smaller problems, I'll just combine them to get my solution. But how do I solve the smaller problem? Again, break it up. OK, fine. So all of you have the answer sheets. OK, good. So let's start the quiz. OK, so this is the first question. The number of basic steps to sort an array of n elements by selection sort grows quadratically with n, linearly with n, logarithmically with n, exponentially with n. Which of the following is or are not true about merge sort? It can be implemented as a recursive function. It's an example of computing by divide and conquer. It proceeds by finding an extreme element and sorting the remainder of the array. And it does not use any comparisons. So which is or are not true about merge sort? Go to the next one. In merge sort, the merging of two subarrays happens before sorting either of the subarrays, after sorting both the subarrays, after sorting one but before sorting the other subarray, none of the above. So which of the following cannot be considered a basic step when analyzing the performance of selection sort? Swapping two array elements, comparing one array element with another reading an element of an array, finding the index of the maximum element, which cannot be considered a basic step. And the last question, when sorting an array of size n by recursive merge sort, the termination case occurs when the size of the array is even, size of the array is odd, size of the array is 1, size of the array is exactly n by 2, and none of the other. 
Okay, so now you should turn in your answer sheets to the TAs. TAs, please collect the answer sheets and bring them here. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to try to solve some practice problems. So here is our practice question. We have seen part of this question in the last class. We want to follow up on that. Remember in the last class I, I had actually drawn it out by hand but here I have tried to put it uh, slightly more formally. So we have an unsorted array A containing n elements okay? and that could be our unsorted array for example and we want to modify selection sort so that we save some computation. Last time we said we want to save some computation but now that we know what a basic step is let us say that we want to modify selection sort so that we save some basic steps compared to selection sort as studied and at the end of it A should be divided into three sorted segments where the sorted segments could be of any size. Remember we discussed about this in the last class just before the end of the last class right. So, so for example given this array input array it is fine if the output of my sorting uh, procedure is this because this array can be divided into three parts such that each of the parts are sorted in increasing order. So, 0, 3, 9 is sorted in increasing order, 1, 6, 7, 8 is in increasing order, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5 is in increasing order. However, the whole array is not sorted in increasing order, 9 appears before 1 and 8 appears before 2 and so on. So, is it clear? So, if you run selection sort on the entire array, then it will just sort everything. So, we are saying we do not need that, it is ok if that modified selection sort keeps things sorted within three segments of the array. It basically divides the array into three parts and within each part it ensures that everything is sorted. This is the question we looked at last time. So what we are going to do today is simplify it a little bit and say that okay let us not worry about three, let us worry about two parts. Okay, so we want the modified selection sort to order the elements in the array such that the array can be broken into two parts and in each part it is sorted. Is the question clear to everybody? So now we have already seen that the number of basic steps needed to sort an array of size n by selection sort is something like n minus 1 times n plus 1 over 2. So the question is that how many basic steps are going to be needed if we divide the array A into two segments of size m and n minus m. So remember the, our modified selection sort is required to have two sorted segments of the array the whole array need not be sorted right and we are expecting to get some savings in terms of the total number of basic steps. So we are saying that suppose these two segments are of size m and n minus m. So how many basic steps would be needed and more interestingly for what value of m is the number of basic steps minimized. So what should you choose the sizes of the two sub arrays such that the total number of basic steps needed to ensure that these two segments are sorted by selection sort is minimized okay? and I mean you are free to do it using whatever way uh, you want uh, but I mean this is basically a minimization problem right and once you find an expression for the total number of basic steps in terms of m and n you can apply your high school calculus techniques to find out for what value of m is it minimized but I want you to do it. Okay, and actually figure out how many number, how, what should be the size of m and then for those of you who can complete that I would like you to apply the same technique to figure out how to solve the problem with three segments. Is the problem clear to everybody? We are saying that we do not need the whole of selection sort, we just need selection sort to break the array into two parts so that each of them are sorted. So what should be the sizes of these two parts such that the number of basic steps is minimized and similarly if I want to break it into three parts such that each of the three parts are sorted, what should be the sizes of the three parts. So first uh, write down your solutions then we will ask you to discuss with your neighbors and then we will try to project some of the selected solutions over here.
so i guess you can dis, you know exchange your copies with your neighbors and discuss how many of you have solved the case for two segments and how many of you got n minus 1 and 1 as the answer nobody n by 4 and 3n by 4 as the answer nobody okay n by 2 okay so okay just swap it with your neighbors and see if uh, and uh, how many of you got the answer for the three segment problem you actually solved it and found the answer not saying i think that this will be something nobody has got uh, oh, you have got solution for the three segment you have actually solved it and found the answer okay okay so uh so i've just taken uh, gautam's copy i'm sure a lot of you would have already done it like this so you just the, the two the two parts are of size m and n minus m so you just form the expression for the number of basic steps do some simplifications and then you want to find the minimum value of that so you differentiate it with respect to with respect to what m right so and uh, when you differentiate it with respect to m and set it to 0 uh, is it guaranteed to give you the minimum value it can also give you the maximum value right so has has anybody i didn't see anybody computed the second derivative and shown that it's really the minimum you have okay i should have okay great so you should do that because otherwise you know the minimum value may be at one of the extremes okay so uh so this is differentiated set equal to 0 and then it turns out to be n by 2 roughly so for the three segment part you basically do the same thing the three parts are of size m l and n minus m minus l and you form this expression simplify it and then you do what differentiate it with respect to So if you take the partial derivatives now this is a function of two variables right so if you take the partial derivatives and then equate the partial derivatives to zero and did anybody compute the second partial derivative okay you did okay and you can show that that is indeed the minimum okay so that happens at m by 3 so can you give this okay so i hope everybody got m by 2 right once you form the expression you differentiate that's fairly easy The n by three part is also n by three part is also easy, just that the expression becomes a little bit more complicated. So now here is the second question. You have an array called birthdays, and let's say there are thousand students, and we want to store the birthdays of thousand students in this array, and each birthday is going to be stored like this. So it's an integer in the year, month, day format. Okay. Now we want to sort the array in order of earliest to latest birthday. which means that a birthday on 1st january regardless of the year is earlier than a birthday on 1st february which is earlier than a birthday on 3rd february and so on right basically you can think of this as we want to sort this array in this order so that we know which days we can celebrate birthdays in the class okay so we don't care which year the student was born as long as there is a birthday we can catch the student and say please give us a treat So, so for example, 1984, 6 February should be ordered before 1983, 21 March. Although 1983 happens before 1984, because 6 February happens before 21 March. Is that clear? This 6 February because the day is six, the month is two, is 21 March because days, uh, date is 21 and month is three. And similarly, 1985, sec, 22 March will be after that. Okay. Now remember, in last class, we actually talked about this operator, the ordering operator, and this is an example of that ordering operator, which is neither the less than or equal to on integers, nor the greater than equal to on integers. 
right? This integer is certainly not less than or equal to this. Okay, this integer is in fact greater than or equal to this. But then this integer is not greater than or equal to this. This is in fact less than or equal to this. So here the ordering operator is neither less than or equal to nor greater than or equal to. It is an ordering operation that we have defined, which is the ordering of birthdays in a year. Is it clear how we want to order this array? So in, in the morning's class, actually one student raised his hand and said, what happens if you have a birthday on 29th February? So I said, I don't know. So, so do, does anybody here ha have a birthday on 29th February? No? Does anybody have a friend or a relative whose birthday is on 29th February? Oh, there are lots. Okay. So what do they do? Do they celebrate birthdays once every four years or? Huh? They celebrate on? 28th. Okay. So well, so if you have a birthday which is 29th February, maybe you can, I mean, from people with experience, they are saying this, they celebrated on 28th. So we can consider it the same as 28th February. And, uh, and that's how we want to order them. Okay. Or, or maybe for the time being, let's just assume that no student in this class, which is true, right? No student in this class has birthday on 29th February. So let's assume that we won't deal with that case. So here is how selection sort for, uh, for this problem might look like. There is a typo here. This should have been find index of min. But this function is looking okay. So find index of min. This is the loop that we had, remember, for selection sort to find the index of, I mean, in the, in the slides we had finding the index of the maximum element in the array. Here we want to really not find the index of the minimum element in the array. Here we want to find the index of the earliest birthday in the array. Okay? So we are asking what should you put in over here? What should be the expression involving birthdays i and birthdays current min index that should go in there? So that finally, uh, th this is the only place where an ordering operator is involved in selection sort. Remember, the other operation is just swapping with current top. That does not involve any ordering operation. So if I can write this part correctly, then I can just use the existing code for selection sort and it will already sort my array in the desired order. This is the only place where we use the ordering, right? And now we are asking what should be the ordering there? Uh, what should be the expression there? involving birthdays i and birthdays current min index. Okay, so please, uh, this is also not a very difficult question, uh, it's fairly straightforward. So I want all of you to write it down and then we'll have some discussion. We'll look at the expressions that you write and we'll have some discussion on that. Okay, so uh, so how many of you have solved it? Hopefully all hands should rise. How many of you have solved it? Okay, good. So I think most of you have. So this, this was a fairly straightforward question, but there is something I want to highlight with this. So this is Ranvijay's solution. So he says that if birthdays i percent 10,000, is less than birthdays current min index percent 10,000, right? So why is it percent 10,000? Because that will pick up the last four digits, right? Which is the month and the day. And we are basically sorting with respect to those last four digits. But now here is a question. So how many of you wrote less than? And how many of you wrote less than or equal to? 
okay so uh, i mean of course both are correct for purposes of solving the problem but suppose i write a program which has less than and i write a, another program which has less than or equal to i feed the same array to both of them will the result the output of both the programs be the same okay so what will be the difference those birthdays having the same month and uh, date uh, if you consider all those birthdays which are having the same month and date then uh, the birthday which is uh, the uh, most down the array will be uh, listed first in the sorted array which is considered last in the comparison uh. will be sorted for uh, will be uh, listed first in the sorted array whereas uh, if it is just less than then it will be the opposite case okay so does everybody agree with him uh, so what he is saying is that if you put less than then so so i said so suppose in the array i have all the birthdays the same okay just the years are different right so if uh, we put just less than ah. then uh, the uh, the array will be the same and if we put less than or equal to then it will be reversed then it will be reversed okay so does everybody agree with him on that so what so suppose i give you an input array in which i mean there's there's a very strange kind of class in which everybody has all the thousand students have the birthday on the same day same day same month okay it's just that the years are different i mean possibly different so the question is uh, if i put less than birthdays i percent 10000 less than birthdays i percent uh, birthdays whatever current min index percent 10000 how will that input array get sorted so your claim is that it will just get it will stay the same and if i put less than or equal to it will get reversed okay so so if it is less than it will get it will remain the same how many of you agree with that is, is the question clear so in the entire array birthdays all the months and days are the same so the only difference is years okay and now we are sorting it using the program selection sort and over here we just saw that one of the solution suggested was birthdays i so so let us say my array is array birthdays is something like this okay birthdays zero is whatever you know let us say 1985 first january and birthdays one is 1986 first january and birthdays two is 1984 first january so my array is just like this everything is first january but here the years are different right and the two options that we saw was if birthdays i is less than uh so birthdays i percent 10000 some current min index whatever percent 10000 this was one solution and the other one was if birthdays uh, i percent 10000 is less than equal to birthdays so in an array like this where all the months and days are the same if i run selection sort with this what is going to happen yes same as the input the output will be the same as the input okay ha huh? if i use the less than sign on this array okay and uh, 
if I use less than or equal to reverse so why do you think it will be reversed okay so, so let us first take a poll from the class so what is your name Srikanth so Srikanth thinks that using less than or equal to this whole array will get reversed how many of you agree with that oh okay how many of you disagree with that wow you okay from here some of you disagree and from here okay so so let's ask him sir the arrangement will be flipped but the whole series will be just reversed i am not very much confused with that huh the whole series will the array will be reversed so i am not very much convinced with that there will be some sort of flipping and all but oh. like if one goes to the n minus 1 when the whole series getting just no but will it be flipped i mean uh, srikanth claims that it's going to get flipped It'll no sir i am not ulta of what we have now no that is, that is not convincing sir ah, so why do you think that's not going to be true sir because at one go one goes to two then 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 but 2 doesn't goes to uh, like okay so anybody else who, who who said that they don't believe that the array will get reversed okay. only only the last element comes to the first place and the remaining things gets displaced displaced by one element down the last one goes up into the array ah. and the uh, remaining ones shift one place the remaining one shifts one place no oh shifts one place you're saying uh, okay so so why is that why does that happen so yeah so i mean you have you have worked it out and seen that that is happening huh yeah. yes yeah. okay so so let us see so this element so if you use less than or equal to then since all of them are equal the current min index will come all the way till the end right and so it will get swapped with this okay so so let us say the current min element here was whatever maybe this is let us say 2000 and this is uh, 1999 something right so this 2000 will come over here and 1985 will come down fine so what we will have is this will become 2000 and this will become 1985 now what is going to happen in the next step in the next step you are going to start from here right and you are going to find the current min index and what will you find the current min index to be it will be this and so now this will go up over here and this will be 1985 and this will be 1986 okay so you already see that it is not flipped right because otherwise 99 should have come here right so now next what happens you start from here and once again 1986 will be picked and it will come here and this will be 1984 right and then 1984 will get picked and it will get put there and whatever is there will come down right so that is exactly what he is saying what is your name Divakar okay so that's what Divakar is saying that everything will get shifted down by one position and only the last element will come to the first and what will be the final last element over here it will be 1999 right so basically the whole thing as if shift cyclically everything comes down and whatever overflows goes back at the top right so although it appears that you know less than or equal to would actually flip the entire array it is not and this is something that you have to be very careful about because i mean true we may not be interested in uh, i mean for, for purpose of this question we might say that all of them are the same but then you might want to sort the same array by different criteria so you might say that I first want to sort them by year and then I want to sort them by this and you don't want the previous sorting to be disturbed if two, two things were equal by the other measure. Okay. 
so but uh, here uh, the less than will actually do that but now here is a here is a further question i have that if you keep less than over here is it the case that the order will actually i mean for this specific array where everything was the same then it preserved the order but is it going to preserve the order in all cases if i use less than then two elements which are which have the same month and day but different years in the final sorted array will they appear in the same order as they appeared in the original array if i use less than in this specific case it does but in general will it so what do you think the answer to that is yes or no in this specific case it does but in a more general case will it okay so so maybe i'll leave uh, you with that food for thought this is actually a very important criterion for sorting algorithms is called the stability of the algorithm so if something preserves the order among equals it's called a stable sorting algorithm if it doesn't preserve the order it's called an unstable algorithm and we are asking is selection sort stable or unstable okay okay